Hi everyone, this is Joel Clear from Gyms Group and I'm with Daniel Richards today who is a Gyms Handyman franchisor. Now, do you want to reel off the multiple regions you're a franchisor first uh, for real quickly, Dan? Uh, yes, I'm the uh, regional franchisor for Tasmania, southern New South Wales, regional Victoria West and East. And you just signed your first franchisee in Tasmania. I think it was the first for the division ever, isn't it? Yeah, correct. Uh, Sam Kirkwood, so he signs up in Mornington in Hobart, um, which I found out, yeah, ever since the building maintenance slash handyman division has ever been created, he's the first one in Tasmania. Before we get into the handyman questions, Dan, I just want to talk about uh, first your background and what you did prior to gym. So you started in 2018 with the division, but you've got an extensive franchising experience and background, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I started my first my first goal with franchising was with the Athletes Foot. So state manager of the Athletes Foot in Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. Um, but prior to that, I was in the liquor industry, but um, the Athletes Foot was um, uh, franchising um, 101 for me. Uh, sort of established everything I wanted to be to to do and be. And I learned a hell of a lot in terms of how to coach and develop and grow franchisees and build um, business cases to be able to um, establish a growth strategy for all the franchise owners in there. And um, from the athlete's foot, I moved to the shaver shop. I've worked for Leonard's Poultry. Um, uh, recently, I was the um, general manager for Spud Bar. So I had a, had a lot of experience in franchising. I've seen um, some good stuff, some, some uh, stuff, uh, but all learnings nevertheless. So you come from a, this is more of a, for people interested in franchising question, you came from a retail-based franchising system and now you're in a, in a, in a mobile services-based one. What's the main differences between the two? Yeah, it's, it's more so about the ability to be able to review, assess and help franchise owners in one location as opposed to being quite mobile. Um, it, it, the way that you're able to um, mentor and coach franchise owners, you don't always get to see firsthand exactly what they're, what they're experiencing out on the ground, which I found uh, an interesting challenge in itself. Um, whereas in retail, you're walking in, you're seeing what the environment is, you can assess it a lot quicker and help them out a lot quicker. So there's been some um, communication challenges um, with franchise owners in terms of being able to understand exactly what they're facing and how they can improve their business. Now, in 2018, uh, you joined Jim, you got a region. So, how did you come about the opportunity and why did you decide on Jim's Handyman? Um, I came about the opportunity. I literally got a phone call uh, from, a, from a connection that's no longer there with uh, John Stafford and um, received the phone call. He, he knows my background in franchising. Um, I had a look at the, the model. I was very lucky because my father was a Jim's mower and bought his first region directly off uh, Jim some 20 years ago. Who was that? Uh, David Richards. He bought it um, directly off Jim. Um, he bought the Montmorency Territory. So okay. I'll, I've been exposed to the Jim's group now for a quarter of a century. So he's, he's, um, he then moved from mowing into trees. So he became a tree, a tree franchisee. Um, so I learned, I learned the business uh, extensively um, as growing up, but also to then when I had a look at the handyman model, I thought this is, um, this is a no brainer in terms of understanding family and trades and what's out there and um, the opportunities. There's, there's endless piles of work if, you, if you're ready to be exposed to it. Um, but um, having it, that in a franchise model was quite exciting. And what made it a no-brainer for you? Because you've got a great background in it, so you obviously would have went through with a fine-tuned coat. And you didn't have your dad as well, so you didn't know a bit about it. But what made it a no-brainer for you? Uh, well, the power of, funnily enough, the power of the brand is, is, is enormous. There was times where, where my dad needed me to go out and help him either mow, mow lawns or cut down trees. And you'd be up front and at any, any time he'd be uh, in one to two referral leads just by having the trailer parked out the front and um, while we're working. So the, the instant recognition and trust of the brand is something that, that is paramount um, and it has for all the franchise owners now that we have in the group, they experience that now where they see that um, our customers just really trust that brand and, and to move forward and have an exciting opportunity to grow franchises, franchises within that brand is um, something I, I wanted to grab with both hands. Cool. And you are a franchisor. So a lot of people outside of gyms, we use the terms like we know, we know what they are, but can you explain to people what a franchisor is and what your role is? Yeah, so as a franchisor, um, essentially what we're looking to do is grow the brand by bringing franchise uh, partners onto the business. And as part of that process, what we do is we try to 
uh, interview and understand that we've got the right clients within our organization. Um, and then secondly, what we do is we coach and develop and then we, we provide support every day. So to a franchise owner, whether it be a quoting issue, whether it be a customer issue, whether it be um, how do they network better, which is always uh, a conversation that our franchisees can always get better at, everyone can network better. Um, there's just multi layers of support functions there. And there's, essentially I see myself as a business coach. So when they run into, I've had franchise owners where they've unfortunately found themselves into cash issues and, and helping their system manage those processes out. Um, we, we're really there as, as, as coach and mentor. Mm. And how many franchisees do you kind of look after? So we've got eight in our region, um, and now that, that's now including Sam. Um, so Sam comes on board, um, and we're hopeful by Christmas we have another two in the pipeline. Okay, and you've got because you've got a lot of. Let's talk about the leads and the work available. So people don't they see the name Jim's Handyman and just think it might be fixing a door and that. Can you maybe just tell people about the range of services that people can do in your division? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the range of services. Um, and it's funny when I talk to franchise inquiries uh, about this. I mean, it can range from as a handyman putting together a chicken coop or a play centre to a full full blown kitchen renovation, um, pergola build, uh, decking construction, um, and just think anything in between. So. Um, the most exciting thing about it, about this business and what our franchisees enjoy the most is the fact that it's not a monotonous, same style of work that they continuously are facing. Um, the lead inquiries are just so varying that they get to do something different all the time. So if people need that to remain stimulated, then we have that opportunity. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's endless types of, of uh lead generation um, type work that we get. It's huge. Uh, and I think with your division, you have, I think one of the most amount of service codes. So if anyone watching that means is if you go to handyman, for example, you'll see a long list of things you can do. So it's a bit of everything, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And there's things on there that we still don't even have in our services list that we still find ourselves having to deal with or, or manage as customer inquiries can, can just be, We've, we've had all sorts of barbecue constructions, you name it. We, we, we've had everything come through. Now, what's included? We always get asked this question. There's a purchase price for a franchise. Yep. So what does someone get for that purchase price? So what they get is it's essentially a, a turnkey uh, business model. So what they get from us is you, you get branded from top to toe. So your vehicle's wrapped, um, professionally wrapped. Your trailer's wrapped if you have a trailer. You get your Google SEO, which... Some people, some, people, some people just don't understand the power of that marketing support that you get. Um, when you're on board with us, we give a six month local area marketing plan. So that means that there's ongoing marketing such as catalogs, Facebook and social media campaigns to help drive the, the launch and assist the franchise owner. Um, you also get public liability insurance. Uh, uh, business registration, you think of it, we've got it covered. So all they need to do is be able to come on board, follow the process and we have them set up in a ready-made ready business. And what sort of backgrounds are your franchisees coming from? They're not just builders, are they? There's a variety of backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Sam, Sam, who's just coming on board, is a fitter and turner. Uh, we've got John Williams, who was a plasterer. Um, Brett down in Terrell, and he's a, he's a carpenter. We've got Guy Johnson up in up in Echuca, who's a plumber. We've got Richard, who is a generalist handyman. Uh, we, we've got ranging levels of experience within our business, um, which we're, which is actually really good because our franchise owners find that. Um, it's a really good resource. I'm, I'm not a qualified plumber. So for any, any conversation that, uh, for example, Brett and Terrell needs and he needs some plumbing support, support's only a phone call away because we have a plumber in our business to, that, that they can um, bounce off. Absolutely. Now, do you want to tell us about the, uh, the unserviced leads? There's obviously everyone's worried about work and stuff like that, but you guys don't have that problem at all, do you? No, no. Um, every month I look in and we review our unserviced leads. Um, last month we were 62% up on unserviced, on total leads. So that included unserviced leads. So, yeah, we, we, have more franchise, we have more franchise lead work than we do for um, franchise owners at the moment. So um, a great example would be that I can point to already. We've launched Hobart. We had six unserviced yesterday. Um, so you look at uh, Wendoree, uh, Ballarat region, we operate on anywhere between five to 10 on service roughly a day. Um, and that, that, that can swing in roundabouts, but essentially our platform is growing with work leads at an enormous rate. So um, yeah, we have no challenges with unserviced work. Um, it's finding enough guys to take on the work. 
But the problem is, it's an ever evolving problem. What we do is we put on a franchise owner, we market and brand them, they go out and do the work. And what happens is we find that we get even more on service. So one, you put on one franchise to absorb the work and you get another monster of more on service. So it just keeps growing. Absolutely. And it's not just for men, is it, the division? So no. Yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. Very, um, I'm very passionate about making sure we're, we're a very family friendly uh, business. So our franchise meetings, it's, it's a family team. So in, in our last meeting that we were, we were able to have on site, we had a HIA um, in Wodonga and we had kids attending, families attending. Um, we would absolutely love the opportunity to be able to have uh, a, a woman be able to come on board with Jim's Handyman. Um, I think there's a lot that they can add to our business and I, there's a huge opportunity, uh, I think, for, for people who do want that. Um, there are women out there that we, that would absolutely do a great job in our business. Mm. And you just mentioned HIA before. Do you want to talk about the HIA involvement with Jim's Handyman? Yeah. Yeah, so HIA, uh, we, I call them our partner. Um, and the reason why they're our partner is at any one time, I can get a quant- I can get any, any answer to any question that I need, whether it be legal, um, whether it be training, development, whether it be uh, fleet services discounts or whatever it might be, there's a huge amount of resourcing through HIA that, that I, I and my guys currently access. Um, even like with our Cert 4s, a lot of our guys are managing Cert 4 qualification at the moment. Victoria have been able to access that for free, which means that with legislation, what a lot of people don't realise is in Victoria, you can only do up to $10,000 um, without a qualification. So we provide that facility for free. There's a new five-week course that HIA are providing our guys now for, for qualified trades with recognition of prior learning so they can build up their qualifications. So along with being able to talk anything around contractual issues that we might have, we can access their legal team for free um, that are building in construction experts, which has been helpful through COVID. Absolutely. Now, do you want to talk about the training itself? So you, there's obviously the, the three-day generic gym group training, but what's beyond that for our gym's handyman franchisee? Yeah, so you have the generic training, which is fantastic. So what that is, is you the franchisee's initial um, exposure to the gyms group, which is, which is just a world of wonder, I suppose, um, in terms of these guys being able to get exposed to other divisions and just see the power of the brand that they're joining. Um, when they then step out of that training, what we do is we apply the handyman real world aspect. So there's five days of training with our guys. They spend it with a franchise owner and we, we develop certain things where we, where we call learning outcomes for franchise owners that we teach them about how to apply the system in real time. So um, they'll, be, they'll attend the B&I meeting. They'll actually use Jim's jobs and understand how to quote and use Jim's jobs. They'll understand what the 10 point plan is and how that comes together and what it means. So that exposure on the ground is really quite important for our guys. Um, as we as say, handyman can do anything, but it's, it's about understanding how the system works and how they can actually use it to, to be, become really highly profitable franchise owners. And the things you all mentioned there, we had a... John Williams is one of your franchisees. He's doing really, really well. And, yeah. he, and he said exactly what you just said then about the system and the things which he did. And he's followed yeah. them and now he's really successful, you know, in a very short amount of time. So, so maybe do you want to talk about those, those things like the B&I and give a bit more detail around that? Yeah, so, I mean, when we talk about B&I, b essentially is a networking organisation in most areas that when a franchisee looks to join, it's a one to two hour commitment each week. Um, what they're doing is they're working with other business professionals um, from all walks of life. And it doesn't have to be just um, uh, another electrician or a plumber. I mean, we're we're talking about some some, um, really, really good lead generators in there, such as architects, um, uh, accountants, bookkeepers, all types of uh, businesses are there. And just the ongoing networking, what it does, it promotes and establishes a great framework for franchise owners to generate more work, Um, but not just more work, but greater connections for the stability of their business. So, um, I mean, I I do know that we do have a job that we're just waiting to be finalised at the moment that one of our franchise owners, as a result, will be securing a half half a million dollar uh, job, um, which will be a huge project job that they've done, but it's because of the work through B&I. That's fantastic. And, and don't you have that coupled with the brand as well? Um, you know, it makes it really powerful. I think John was saying one of your franchisees that he's, I think you gave me the background on which he just 
and was it 20 grand a month at least of refer just referral work from BNI? And that's Correct. not including anything else. Correct. So they take out real estate agents, take out Jim's leads, take out um, NDIS, take out all the other avenues of revenue, and it's on top of that. Yep. So it's Absolutely. huge. Absolutely. So the division, I think we're at around 60 something now. Is it all 50? Yeah, well, I think we're at 67 now from last count. I know there are a few more coming on, um, but we need more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's clearly need more. So what type of people do you think make good Jim's handyman and franchisees? Or who is it open to anyone? Or what do you think? The, the type of person you need is? Look, I don't think there's a specific type and this is what I think the beauty of the system is. I think the system's there for any type of person to be able to use it for whatever advantage they seek to, to, to take. So, I mean, if you look at someone that's, that's of an older generation, roughly 45 to 55, and they're looking for something that just gets good, consistent lead rate and work, um, and they're not, they're pretty, they're at the later stage of their life, they're looking for just a nice income up until their retirement. The system works for them. Conversely, if you get a young jet that comes in at 27, 28, lots of energy, wants to build up a really strong and powerful business and wants to grow, well, the system supports that as well. So it's a multi-dimensional flexible system that um, has so many aspects to it. It's really open to anybody. And, and that's that's probably one of the beautiful beautiful things as a franchise all that I've, I'm able to work with guys that are different aspects of their life that you can help coach so that they're successful no matter what. Let's talk about a couple of them. Because you mentioned the word flexibility, which is great. Just talk about the lifestyle. You probably, so you might have in your franchisees, do you have a couple of those different spectrums where you might, might have the lifestyle franchisee than the ones who are maybe just the real, you know, want to build a massive business? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, what, one of my favourites, um, he's a Collins supporter, so I have to mention that as well, is Richard Donders up in Wodonga. 65-year-old um, male, um, he is a journalist handyman. He's an absolute advocate for the system, follows it um, to the nth degree, uh, very brand loyal, but he likes to be able to work nine till two every day. Um, nine till two, not bad. Nine till two. <laughs> likes to walk away earning at least six hundred dollars a day. Yeah. So what he and he does that for four to five days a week. Um, uh, not too much pressure on him. He enjoys the work, um, and that's where he's at. And when he attends every single franchise meeting, which is fantastic, he's a positive contributor, um, and, and the system works for him. He's brilliant. Um, in fact, he's actually talking to another guy about joining in Albury because there's just too much work up there, which is exciting. Um, then you've got um, a previous interview we've already had with, with John Williams, who's probably, he, who I, is a prime example of how you go from a small uh, region of Wendoree to expansive growth, multiple cars, multiple employees. Mm. In a two year period, he's, um, he, he's certainly blown, blown the business apart, but um, the, the greatest strength of John is that he has a real open mindset to learning. So he's always asking questions. He's always looking to get better. He's always quite open about what he does. Um, again, he's right into the franchise group. And then you've got Brett down in Tarawin. Um, and Brett's been with the business now for seven years, coming up to eight years. Um, originally, you're building maintenance. And um, he's, got, he's got his entire life cycle just worked out perfectly. He, he likes to work four and a half to five days a week booked out for three months um, and has, the man hasn't taken a leave for 18 months. So with his front <laughs> because Terrell and service is huge. Now that's interesting because he hasn't taken a leave for 18 months. Yeah. He's yeah. still a Jim's handyman franchisee. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Uh, it's all because of the brand. He, he, he grew up, he built the business because of the brand and he knows that it delivers integrity. Um, so he, he just won't leave it. Um, it offers too much to his business. Uh, even not look at the end of the day, could you argue about um, could he become an independent? Yeah, he probably could um, because he's so good at what he does, but he's been so reliant on the gym's brand and, and what it delivers in terms of the integrity of his business. He wouldn't leave. Yeah. And I just want to make that point for people watching is that we have some franchises. I'll, I'll use my own example. It might've been around for 30 years or 25 years. and haven't taken a lead, let's say in 15 years, for example, but they're still there. Yep. They're still there for those things you said for the brand. They like the meetings, they like the support and they just like how everything works for them and they're happy to pay for that. You know? Yep. Absolutely. Plus everything else, if they want, if they ever get, if they ever do need work, just turn back leads on again and away they go, but they stay for that extra stuff. And that's really important for people to know. Yeah, absolutely. He's a qualified uh, carpenter by trade. Um, like I said, loves the system um, and with the new five-week RPL program that HIA have come out with, 
again, we're just adding value to his business because he's able to do that so that he can actually take on more work over $10,000 as well. So um, there's multiple things, multiple layers of support that always seem to come out with, uh, with gyms that we can provide. Now, what are some common questions that you get from people researching Jim's Handyman uh, that maybe you want to address here for you? Just to give you a nice video thing that you can maybe flick to people, but what are some common FAQs that you get? Oh yeah, how much does it cost um, is one. And um, so our regions, we sell our regions for 40,000. So, and that's turnkey as, as, as described. Um, and when I say turnkey, that's with a six month plan of growth development uh, via marketing, bookkeeping, support, et cetera. Um, another one is how much do our guys earn? So um, that varies and it really does vary because it, 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 you can't, I mean, we just spoke about Richard Donders and John Williams. They're both, both very different motivated, motivated franchisees. So um, essentially it's up to the franchise owner on how much they do want to work and how much they want to earn. Um, the work is there, the processes are there, the systems are there. If they want to follow it, then, then the world's their oyster. Um, we do have a minimum paperwork guarantee, uh, which is $1,100, um, but, and that, that's in place for six months. So they've got the comfort by, one of the biggest things that I find is that people are really nervous about taking the step from working for the man to then taking on a job um, of being a business owner. And it's quite a daunting step. So I've never been I've never been in a franchise system that provides so much support and structure and financial stability in relation to paperwork guarantee and marketing programs, um, along with probably the strongest brand in Australia. Um, to be, it's the safest step that you can possibly make if you're going to uh, walk into your own business. Yeah, and just for anyone watching, paperwork guarantee, even though it's there and it's promoted that it's there, it never really I don't think it's ever paid that much anyway. Never needed. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I know of multiple franchise owners that follow the system and get started um, by doing all the ten point plans, and the, they follow what we actually um, promote and advise. And the lowest month that I've heard is fifteen thousand dollars start. <laughs> there you go. You know that's and that's that's enough. You know, I know because that's the one question we always see as well online when we do stuff is you know the paperwork guarantee and will you, how much will you guarantee me? And no one really ever needs to um do it. Well, people don't realise that you, you can't by law, um, in, by, according to the franchise code, you can't tell people how much you expect that they're going to make um, because there's too many, uh, there are too many variables. But what you can do is that you can talk to the system about if you follow the system, we've got proven track record around what that system looks like. Um, and paperwork is really nice buffer for them to say, well, it is always there as a, as a, as a plan B, um, which most other businesses don't have. Yeah, and we also encourage everyone to call the current franchisees because obviously you provide them with a list of current franchisees and that's probably the best way to ask them directly as opposed to um, the franchisor. Well, we we don't have, we have a policy that we won't um, progress a we won't progress a franchise application unless they've actually spoken to franchisees that are on the ground. Um, because it's one thing to talk to myself, but it's another to talk to franchise owners who are doing it day in, day out. They're the ones turning the tools. So I'll, anyone that comes on board, I know Sam had to talk to quite a few of our franchise owners um, and ask them the questions um, before he actually sat down and spoke with us. Which, well, which is a good thing. That's, you know, that's in everyone's best interest. So your video is just scratchy there, but we'll keep going because your audio is good. Um, yep. So what I want to talk about now is also, we've obviously talked about the support. Um, so with the with the the trial days, so we always say come on a trial day, come on a trial day. What can someone expect when they do make that inquiry online and then hopefully proceed to a trial day? Yeah, so what they can expect is just an open open book. Um, we encourage our franchise owners to to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. And I suppose there's a realization in every business that not everything's perfect. And what we try to do is elate that thought that we're not always we have a lot of really um, good strengths, but not everything is always clockwork. So I want them to understand that there are going to be times in business that that are real and. Um, in a trial day, they'll get, they'll get exposure to the challenges that our franchises face, how they manage them, which is exactly why we're in a franchise business is for that coaching and support and what it looks like in the future. So if they get exposure to those opportunities, it's really up to them to ask as many questions as they possibly can. Uh, any, if you can, if you can literally try to tear the business apart, our franchise owners are so proud, um, they'd love to tell you everything about it. So, and they're not afraid to tell you what things they don't enjoy, how they manage that, what they do enjoy. Um, but more 
the norm's more about what they do enjoy. I think new inquiries struggle to understand that just, just the enjoyment levels that most people, once they start, do have in the business. Yeah, I think I'm always, you know, we always, the question is, you know, can you give us an info pack, send us an info pack? But the best thing for anyone doing researching a gym's franchise is just speak to the, get to the stage where you can speak to franchisees because yep. obviously franchise all will tell you everything you need to know. But, you know, if you really want to, if you think it's too good to be true, just talk to the franchisees is the best way to go. Yeah, we, we often get told it's too good to be true. And then when they start, they, they really do enjoy themselves. But that's exactly right. I mean, we've got nothing to hide. We're a big company. Um, there is nothing to hide. They're, we're exposed. Um, ask the questions. Find out the information. If you genuinely want to be able to take the next step, the information is there. you just got to attain it and make, make the call. And what do you think stops people making the next step? Because there's a lot of people who want to do it but they just there's like gap between actually you know looking at stuff and actually making an inquiry or actually going the inquiry and actually proceeding further what do you think stops people doing it is it just something where they're unsure about that transition or what do you think or what can you say maybe to make put their mind at a bit more ease yeah i think i think essentially it's always it's the big one where most are coming from an employer into a world of unknown essentially and um that's, I think that's the, that's the thing that holds people back is asking enough questions to really understand what that next step looks like and what the support looks like when you actually do that. Um, that, that, that fear of failure is probably a key driver of, of people going away as opposed to, to, to taking the leap of faith. Um, and you see, I've seen it a lot for a lot of years in franchising, um, dealt with a lot of franchise inquiries and they're always very similar. That There's no guarantee to what you can earn and um, but you look at what you, you want to be able to assess what the brand is, what the system is and what the success rates are of the franchise owners and why they're successful. Um, and you want to build that into something that when you're looking at going into a new business, can you do that yourself? Um, and Jim's is challenging. Um, Jim's is a challenging business in the sense that we have a high customer service model. That's why the business is so, is so big. Um, we're, we're, we're really strong on our modeling in terms of how we go about what we do and when we do it. So you've got to be ready for that as well. Um, and if you're ready to embrace that and you, you can see that there's a chain of success, well, um, the money tends to follow after the decision, but you've got to make that step. And you, so your screen is just frozen to my end, Dan. So we'll keep going. So we'll, we'll keep getting the audio, um, and we'll try and we'll try and leave a picture. There you go. You come back. I don't know what it is. It's, I think you're ADSL up there, and as, as you said, I think I'm lucky to get MBN down here in the city. I'm just hopeful but, the cows the cows aren't interrupting the internet. <laughs> No, uh, that, that from my region is I'm from Warrnambool, so I love the, love Ballarat. Um, so with with the uh, so you just said something really goes to fear of failure, whereas you've just said before as well, we've got those safety nets in place to compensate for that. So and I do encourage anyone to watch the John Williams interview because I can imagine I'm not trying to put words in John's mouth, but I can imagine he'd be saying he wish he'd done it a few years ago. Um, you know, back now to start, just knowing where he is now in the space of two years from being a plasterer driving to Melbourne every day from Ballarat, whereas to whereas he is now has a people working for him and his family's involved and everything like that. Oh yeah. He's, um, I'll, I remember when I first met him and, um, our interview up in Ballarat was really interesting. And John spoke about the travel an hour and a half there, an hour and a half home, yep. um, 12 hour days, um, six days a week earning the same amount. Um, I think he, at one point, I think John just got to the point where he's making the decision and that was going to happen. And ever since, he's working nine till two, nine till three. Um, he had multiple employees. He, Ebony, his um, sister, has started. He's got his mum and dad involved. And it just it's doesn't stop growing. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just doesn't stop growing. He has... Um, a whole a whole sleeve of agents now that he does work for he, his referral systems through the roof and um, it's incredible at the amount of um, growth that he's been able to achieve in such a short period of time and what I get from him is, is that he's just followed what you've laid out in front of him so all that stuff you're talking about before for the BNI and the six months and the things like that he's literally followed everything the system says and you have said to a T he, he's, he, yeah, absolutely. He's someone that I can categorically say from start to finish, from the day one, he did gen, gym's generic training, walked out and did everything he was told to do from there. Then he, when he bought Ballarat, he wanted to redo the generic training. So he went back, did the, did the three days training with his, with his dad, uh, Gordon, um, just to go back and refresh himself and then reapplied all those learnings again. So 
again, if you're willing to learn and follow the system, um, the world's your oyster. And I know people hear that a lot, but it's very, very true in John Williams' case. Um, and it's very true in a lot of other franchisees' case. The system works. You, that's what you're buying. So trust it and follow it. Absolutely. And it's great advice because we've, I've interviewed a few franchisees and the ones who just do what it says to literally do and get out of their comfort zone because it's not always going to be easy. It might not be easy for someone to go and give cards out or to go and go approach a real estate agent initially. But after you keep doing it, you build that muscle, yeah. um, you know, in a year's time or two years time, uh, you'll be thanking yourself that you did. Cause I just can't believe, I think you replaced his income in the first. So I asked him a question. I said, what was your level of income before to, and how long did it take to replace it? And I think he said, I can't remember what he said. It might have been a couple of weeks or even a month. Um, you know, which is yeah, which is three three months here. In within three months, he um, earned his return. He got his return on investment, so he got his startup back within three months. That's fantastic. So, um, yeah, and again, it, the the system works. And in my time in franchising, it doesn't matter what system you work to. And even if I talk talk away from gyms and talk to other businesses that I've been a part of, the the characteristic of franchising is the, the ones that are the most successful are the ones that buy into the brand and follow the system and the advice. Um, having a good relationship with a franchisor is critical um, because you need to have really good conversations and you need to have those hard conversations that you're not sure about um, what to do. If, you, if you're willing to have those, buy the brand, buy what the brand values are and follow the system, you can't go wrong. And, um, and, and I back that every day of the week. So what I'll do is thanks, thanks for your time, Dan, today. And what's the best way for someone to make an inquiry for Jim's Handyman? Just take the step and make the call. Um, yeah. Call 131546 and make the inquiry. Um, do it straight away. Um, Actions speak louder than words. Um, we'll help you come on board. We'll get, you, we'll get your future started. Absolutely. And I hope everyone does do that. You can watch John Williams' uh, interview as well on YouTube if you are researching the brand who is one of Daniel's franchisees uh, to see what we're talking about as well. So thanks for your time today, Dan. Really appreciate it. Thank you.